Budget-strapped communities have had a tough go of it financing Fourth of July fireworks shows in recent years. Corporate sponsors in West Michigan have picked up the tab in Grand Rapids. How important are these patriotic displays for communities? We discuss on West Michigan Week. And thank you for joining us on West Michigan Week. We're talking fireworks shows on the panel. Carol Vallade, Grand Rapids Business Journal. Ed Kettle, you're on the 4th of July Fireworks Committee here in Grand Rapids. And Kevin Douglas, you're with Amway Corporation. You, uh, you work with bringing in some of the college talent into exactly. the area. Mm -hmm. Well, here we go, another 4th of July. Um, boy, this has been going on for a long time. Corporate sponsors uh, coming in, picking up the tab. Why is it so important that we have these displays? Um, it seems like money being, <laughs> being blown up in midair, but there, there is an impact. Um, and we mentioned patriotism. What is it about this holiday and making sure that those fireworks are there? Well, you know, when, uh, when I took it over a few years ago, uh, it was unfortunately dropped by another group, and this is May, and I called the city and said, what's going on? We can't not have Fourth of July. You just, it's just part of the American fabric to celebrate that day. It's, when you think about it, it's really our only uniquely American holiday. Uh, all of our other holidays are shared or, or borrowed from other cultures and countries. So, um, you know, I, I just, I'm, I'm not a big flag-waving kind of guy, but, you know, when you're an American, you have to kind of stick your chest out once in a while and, and be proud, and it's, that, it's the one unifying thing that we have is our patriotism. It's, you know, we, we argue with each other about certain things, but on that day, you, you can't deny we're all Americans. So it's, it's just a good, healthy thing for our, for our community and for our country to have. How difficult is it to um, pull together all the corporate support in that vein, you know, especially in this time yeah. uh, where everybody's being very frugal with their yeah. dollars. Yeah. You, you know that you've reported on me for the last five years and it's been a beggar's banquet every year. I just going out and, and trying to get sponsors and the generosity, once we get to the table, generosity is endless, but it's, it's getting people to come, particularly in these hard times or some companies were kind of in a position they may be able to afford it, but you know they're laying people off and closing plants and things like that. They can't make that kind of public expression at that point, of that kind of money. So that it has been very difficult. This year than before or not? This year it's starting to loosen up. Uh, this year has been better. Uh, so I know the economy is starting to turn. The comfort level to express corporate existence in a, in a community is, is starting to open up again uh, because some of that pressure is off, that outside pressure. So. It's How many sponsors better. do you have this year? Well, I've got uh, Amway is our lead sponsor. Cheers, uh, and Kevin. And <laughs> yeah. Yes, and thank you because that's a pace setter gift. They've, they've committed for three years, which is oh, great. Mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, thank you, which mm -hmm. then I go back to my other sponsors who have in kind said they, because of their corporate structures, they can't make a three-year commitment, but they've all said we're on board. Don't worry, just I have to go back to them and renew it. But, uh, so we've got AT&T this year, and they're new. They've never been with us. Michigan Lottery is back. Um, and then uh, our, our old friends at Spartan Stores who have always been. So Amway and Spartan Stores have been with me since the very, very, since my beginning, and they were there before me. So uh, I kind of inherited them, and they decided to stick with me. So that works out pretty our good. Our costs up? Ed? Costs are up um, on everything. Uh, everything goes up. Not, but not just the product, or the blowing up powder right. and all of that, insurance, but the labor. Your insurance and costs. The insurance. And And uh, just the little things you have to do. And, the, and you know, I have to cover police and all those kinds of things, city costs. And they're very generous, too. I mean, they, they give me a, a, a real good deal on this stuff, but still, they can't do it for nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, there has th these private groups that come in and do these things have to pay for those services. What's so. the price this year? About $115,000. Wow. Yeah. And that's for a 20-minute show? Well, a 20-minute show, but uh, constant entertainment. We have the parade right. uh, at 5 o'clock, which the is first. Uh, every year I get a bunch of phone calls, and where's the parade? And I, uh, <laughs> I don't have one, you know. But, you know, so we decided let's do it. My son Nate is actually taking that on and coordinating that. So oh. that's going to be the same road as we do for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Intergenerational work. Yeah, oh yeah, I make all my kids work. <laughs> <for> you, <laughs> <them>. <laughs> they do. Every and your one son's still in Grand Rapids, still all, in Michigan. Yeah, that's all my kids, my daughter doesn't live here anymore, but they yeah. come back up to work, yeah. she and her husband. The so. parade is really just a backdrop for the politicians. Fourth of July and politicians yeah. 
So you probably have more entries along those lines. Than well, you know, it, we do, but there's a, uh, unfortunately this time of year you can't get high school bands or even college bands mm -hmm. or anybody. So it's we're a little bit music light right now, but uh, we'll we'll solve that in years to come. But but more importantly, uh, we've got all kinds of different groups coming in that are every day. I get four or five applications in the mail. We've got them online. Our our website is uh, fourth with a l number four t h of july g r dot com and people are going to there and they're signing on and we need volunteers still you know this friday night still looking for volunteers so. symphony on the banks of the grand this year? not the symphony we we go more popular music uh... and we do a lot of crazy things uh... we have bozo bozo show and and uh, we have one of the local weathermen comes down and does a thing uh... one of our media sponsors comes in and does a show down there um, and we do crazy audience blasts where we give things away. We do things where we get up and dance, make people get up and dance because you're sitting on that ground all the time. You've got to get them to move around. And we like the interactive stuff rather than just sit and listen to music. And then great entertainers. Um, J3 starts us out, good country, kind of vocal, blending kind of bluegrass and Celtic sound. Trace, which is the next generation of Natchez Trace. Uh, there's two members and they've added another yeah. fella. That's really well known and, and mm -hmm. very successful in its own right. So they'll be on. Um, and then uh, Delilah DeWild will uh, lead us into the main act. And the main act is um, Ashley Gearing, uh, up and coming country artist. Um, and so we'll be rocking over there. And then on Rosa Park stage, uh, we start at 5.30 with Spitting Image right after the parade passes by. Have, uh, they're a high school band, like a school of rock, and they played for us last year, and they're just terrific young people. And every year it's a different group, you know, because it's a school thing. Um, and then uh, after that, we've got uh, a whole lineup of bands, and I stupidly didn't bring my list, but they're all good, and they're in the press. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then uh, We the Kings is going to end up. They're re national recording artists from Florida. Uh, they played here before on New Year's Eve, and they've got a great following here. And they'll play after the fireworks. So Ashley leads us into the fireworks, 10:30 sharp here on WGVU for people who are shut-ins or can't make it downtown. And then, um, and then at 11 or so, then We the Kings will play for about an hour at Rosa Park. So lots to do, lots of stuff. And the impact for the city, uh, just to have how, how many people? Over the years, typically, what's the average attendance? Average is about 150,000 people. Which, for the city, over a time span of six, seven, maybe even eight hours, people yeah. show up early. Yeah. What are we looking at here? What are the impacts? Anybody ever take a look? Well, at? you know, I met with the downtown merchants, and we've never had a parade before, so they're not geared up for it right now. But in, I think next year, more merchants will be open. It was kind of like the first year of Art Prize; they didn't quite figure it out. So. Now that we're bringing people down around that dinner hour into the central city, which we want to do, we want to support downtown. That's why we've gone to Rosa Parks and shoved things more on that side of the river. Um, I think that by next year, the parade will get better and the, the stores will start to open and restaurants and plenty to do for well, everybody. In some ways, this is year one of a whole new yeah, 4th of July yeah, we're celebration. Kind of, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Amway mm -hmm. has been very, very helpful. Their staff has just been terrific to work with. Why does Amway do this, Kevin? <laughs> uh, generosity. And when you look at bringing talent to West Michigan, uh, this is just one component of it. People want to come to a vibrant town, vibrant downtown. And when you have a fireworks display, that's one key indicator of a, a community that is about bringing people together and networking and having a place to go and socializing and and then that that's just that adds to all that will the company use some visuals then to display in your own recruiting and uh, as sponsors of several other programs uh, when we bring candidates in town mm -hmm. uh, we talk about everything from this would be one key component to talk about being a key sponsor with the fireworks as a, a company that's involved in the community. And you're pretty much mm -hmm. putting the proof out there. Right. Just, uh, in mm -hmm. addition to the names on the buildings. Correct. So. Correct. Yeah. And so when you look at uh, what people look for, they want a variety of things. And the first thing to do is to find out what is of interest to a candidate and is this community for them. And so we find that information out and then we explain it to fit them instead of just you know it, throwing everything out there. Mm -hmm. And so you know, they may, they may want to say, is your downtown vibrant? Yes, it is. For example, we sponsor the 4th of July parade. Do you have bike trails? Do you have um, hiking? Do you have water areas, canoeing, whatever it is? Those are all the top mm -hmm. questions that mm -hmm. you're hearing from mm -hmm. job candidates then mm -hmm. coming into this area. Right. I they they want 
to have a quality of life. The job is important, but the next biggest component when somebody makes a move to an area is can it support their quality of life? That's of interest to them. And so we spend a lot of time from the very beginning finding out that information. So it's not just about their work background, but it's also about what's of interest to them and what's gonna pull them to the community and what's gonna cause them to stay. Do they also tend to be living in the urban area then as opposed to the suburbs or do you see it more dispersed? It's dispersed. Mm -hmm. There's no one uh, key area that they migrate to. Uh, like I said before, our job is to figure out what is it? Is it urban, rural, is it um, country? Do, what is it? And the unique thing about Grand Rapids is from downtown, you can be in the country in a few minutes. Right. So yeah. it's a great area. So when, when you look at, what, what are the dollars? What is, what is Amway putting towards this uh, e event as a sponsor? That, I'm not sure. Okay, but we'll, we'll assume it's a portion of the $115,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So beyond the recruiting, mm -hmm. what, what's in it for Amway? I mean, it's a great way to recruit, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I'm going to guess not everybody gets pulled in and says, wow, look at those fireworks. Right. But right. Uh, the Amway name alone and being a lead sponsor, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's generosity, mm -hmm. but it, it, does, it does even more. What, mm -hmm. what else does that mm -hmm. name do when you're the lead sponsor? It, it promotes, I think it's, in, in my opinion, <clears throat> it helps bring other people along, other companies along, to say it is important to support your community. It is important to be visible. It is important to give back. And so it, it, I don't think it's only about Amway. I think it's about being out there to say, to encourage people, other companies, that you need to get involved and you need to contribute back to your community. I know, Kevin, you're more... Um intertwined with mm -hmm. the with the <laughs> recruitment and, mm -hmm. and retention of, of people but I, I'm, I also know that Amway certainly during its anniversary year made uh, a, a great number of contributions to a great number of different events and and formats around the world mm -hmm. um, is that uh, what have you seen come home from that is there greater uh, recognition mm -hmm. of the company Mm -hmm. Anywhere you might be recruiting people? Uh, absolutely. The, the history of Amway has been not to uh, advertise much. And over the last few years, we've started advertising. We have outstanding products. We have an outstanding research group. And we wanted to get the word out there, kind of the best kept secret. Kind of like Grand Rapids is the best kept secret. Not many people I wonder know where about it came it. from. Right. <laughs> and so when you start wanting to advertise that you have great products and help people become aware of your brand, um, that's the big payback. And it makes my job a little easier when you go on campus, whether it's here or around the world, and you say Amway, now people st are starting to understand, oh, okay, I'm, I'm hearing more about Amway. You know, you're a major player in you know, health and nutrition and uh, cosmetics and the other products that we manufacture. So it, it brings that to the table. Have you seen a spike in sales? Yeah, oh, absolutely. As a result? Our North American sales are up, globally our sales are up. Uh, we don't, for we example, don't have the numbers uh, yet, so I just uh, want Oh, nine and a half. <laughs> we're about 9.2 billion now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when I started at Amway seven years ago, we were 4.2 billion. And a great deal of that was coming from the Asian markets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so mm -hmm. there, I, I would assume that they're still dominant in terms of total sales revenues mm -hmm. for the company. Mm -hmm. Our Asian market is the largest. Uh, is there a concern then mm -hmm. for what's occurring in Japan? with the nuclear fallout? Uh, I, it's and, been and interesting that that, um, that has continued to rebound. Okay. Very resilient folks, very supportive. And we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back in one minute, more on the Grand Rapids fireworks display. And we're back with more West Michigan Week. We're discussing financing fireworks displays. And Ed, well, now that you know that Amway made $9.2 billion, <laughs> do you feel you got shortchanged in the negotiations? 
I saw your face yeah. over there. <laughs> he just Wait got a the insurance bill, too. So. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Uh, there is a risk uh, when you put these shows yeah. together. You had mentioned the insurance has yeah. doubled. Right. Um, what takes place when you, when you put something like this together, when you look at the numbers that are drawn in, uh, there is a liability here. Absolutely. And I'm required by the city to carry X amount of liability insurance to cover them. And I also am obligated to indemnify or cover my sponsors as well. So uh, we have a pretty hefty policy that we have to maintain. And that's um, why your hair is turning gray. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five years ago, I looked like that. Now <laughs> uh, it's coming in. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, you talk about the liability involved. There are, I guess, what I, I would call there are people out there that are fireworks connoisseurs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, where does your investment come in? What shells are you using? How many shells will be used? What's the duration of yeah, the show? Right. What are some of the nuts and bolts of this Well, show? yeah, there's, uh, I was a, we were talking earlier about, I was a charter member of Celebration on the Grand, and they've, Celebration likes the big beefy stuff, and it's great, and it's so exciting to go to that show. There's no, there is no comparison to Celebration on the Grand. But they had to move their dis display from the pedestrian bridge mm -hmm. to Bridge Street because of the amount of space you have to provide with that big a shell. I can keep it within a 600-foot radius, so I can stay down at that, and right in the center where it's the best view from the park and the proximity thing. So I, I go a little bit smaller. I go, you know, only three inch or four inch rather than six or eight inch. But um, because of that, I found this new company, Rozzy, a couple of years ago. And the guys who do the shooting are, are actually from Grand Rapids. And that's what intrigued me. I wanted to keep right. it local. Uh, Rozzy's the big company is located in Cincinnati. But these guys are just nuts about this stuff. They just love it. And they design shows that are just terrific. So we do, uh, our show is still in the air and a lot of big boomers, but um, they do such artistic things off that bridge with these fans and different displays and colors. And the way they do this is just incredible. And when you're on that riverfront and you're watching all that reflect off the buildings down there, and oh, it's just incredible. It just, Where do you go to incredible. get a preview? Uh, well, you can <laughs> run tape from last year. <laughs> <laughs> Which we're showing throughout this show. Oh, so <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. The viewers have watched them. No, okay. But you obviously have interviews with, with the people that you're selecting. Well, you know, uh, I don't. Uh, I, I took these guys on a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was real glad. Based on their videos. Based on nothing. I just said, okay, if you can do this for this price. Um, they said, okay. Well, I said, okay. And yippee okay -yay. but it worked <laughs> out for the best. And I, di I did, I went online and I checked out Razi, and they were a legitimate company and all that kind of stuff. I did my due diligence on that, mm -hmm. uh, that they had all the proper coverage and workman's comp and all that stuff you need, but, um, but I've n I'd never seen an actual show from them. So well, I was lucky, it worked out great. And the community's lucky to have them, so. I always find it ironic that this is the most patriotic day of the year and where do we get our fireworks from? <laughs> who, who are, what, what country are we, are we helping to finance the same again? one we're in debt to right now. Right. Yeah. In fact, that, that was one of the other reasons uh, I had trouble with our previous, it wasn't trouble, it was just the circumstances with our previous shooters. They, um, they ran into the wall and they had just enough in the warehouse to cover me that one year, but they told me the prices of fireworks is going to go sky high because they had two or three problems in China where these big plants blew up and so the manufacturing was way way down of this stuff and uh, I think these guys uh, search a little bit broader I think they get a lot of Italian and other countries other other kind of fireworks that are just different and not not all from China so we're lucky to find them and their sources are good and the flow is good and we're all set so I know you, you, you talk about the liability and all that but you know, the, every year there's an accident somewhere, it seems like. Mm -hmm. seems like. I mean, there may be years where there are none. Mm -hmm. But in the back of your mind, I, I'm, I'm sure that that weighs. And mm -hmm. I mean, h how do you set it up so that the chances are minimal mm -hmm. that something will happen? Right. I mean, how do you walk it off? How does it work out to make sure that, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that those attending get to see a great show, but also are safe? Mm -hmm. We, uh, by, first of all, the, uh, the company, the quality of the company first and how their knowledge of how to do these things. 
by going with the smaller sizes, I'm able to position them in the middle of that bridge and keep my 600 foot limit. The fire department inspects them several times a day as they're setting these things up. So there are checks and balances in the entire day. And I'm on the phone with the fire department. Somebody's calling me all the time uh, during this entire setup. And so the Grand Rapids Fire Department, we don't do anything without their approval, and they're on it. They, they this has got to be a great concern to the sponsoring companies, I was just thinking too, that because, too, because you don't want to end up with an accident right. and your name attached to right. the right. violent deaths of mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. Uh, so that I, I imagine there's some diligence on the part of the sponsors as well. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why we put trust in you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, th you know, a lot of those, a lot of accidents that happen are kind of smaller community, not you know, kind of homemade guys. Mm -hmm. Really, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not bad mouthing anybody. But with the bigger companies like mm -hmm. these guys that are nationwide, they very, very rarely have those kinds of accidents. So. Um, and they are also highly insured as well. That they send me their insurance thing, and they cover us, and everybody's good. So, mm -hmm. I wanted to um, ask just a, another couple of questions about the uh, the aspects of re recruitment and mm -hmm. retention for people, and and why it matters to companies. I know Amway is also mm -hmm. a big sponsor of Grid Seventy mm -hmm. in downtown Grand Rapids, Steel yes. Case, Herman Miller, Amway, Meyer, mm -hmm. um, all uh, trying to create a focus on the community. Right. What's new with GRID and is that making the turn that mm -hmm. you expected in mm -hmm. terms of this? Uh, because mm -hmm. re re recruitment is on every employer's mm -hmm. mind, right. every right. business owner. Right. One, one thing that GRID 70 has done, and, and it, from what I understand it's expanding, is that it, it gives people an opportunity to <laughs> gather information from different thought processes. And so when you have companies from different um, venues. Different areas of expertise. Expertise that you can bounce ideas off of and get different thoughts that you would normally have received before. That's, that's value and that uh, drives more innovation. And the other thing it does is the space itself drives uh, folks to it. And when you look at uh, attract and retaining, it's a lot of it's about the workspace. And is it a cool environment? Can I collaborate? Can I feel free to go talk to other people? Can I feel free to explore? think of different ways of doing things and that really is what GRIT 70 drives and we're looking at bringing some interns down there and having them work uh, with other companies uh, so that they can get exposure to different uh, so businesses. So all of the participating companies then are mm -hmm. offering internships through the program and at the GRIT building? Not yet. And I own That's it? what we're working on. Okay. Yeah. I'm working on that process. And you're going mostly through local colleges and universities mm -hmm. for those internships? Most likely because we, they may go year round so we mm -hmm. need someone in the area. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's just a concept, so it hasn't come to life yet. But uh, the idea was to bring them here, expose them to the, the uh, variety of businesses that we have. And for example, if we had an intern at Amway that decided, well, I like Wolverine better, that's great. Mm -hmm. But the talent's here, and that's the main driver, is to get the talent in West Michigan. Mm -hmm. are, are you seeing with, with this economy and you know, the talk of a loss of skills for those people who are on the sidelines, are you seeing more is middle-aged interns? Is that something that's beginning mm -hmm. to kind of creep in as a dynamic to recruiting? Or even returning yeah. veterans, I would yeah. think that's a big Yes, thing. we are seeing, uh, we have several interns that have families that have gone back to school and started new careers, so we're starting to see more of that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as this economy begins to turn, are you uh, more selective in those events that you sponsor? I mean, do you zero in on here, here's the event, here's the impact it will have, and here's, here's what it will produce for, for Amway. Is there do more you, of that going on? Is do, it more selective? Do you mean from a recruiting standpoint? Or? Well, as far as sponsorship and then tied into recruiting. Mm -hmm. I would say you, you have to um, be selective because there's so much out there. And we have, uh, you know, we have goals and we have objectives of the, the different skill sets that we look for, that, uh, the positions that are driving our business. And so we typically go after, you know, we're, we're selective from that standpoint to make sure that it's in li alignment with the skills that we're looking for. Well, every anxious student mm -hmm. or new graduate mm -hmm. is wondering what those skills mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. Top three? <laughs> <laughs> Top three, I would say innovation. Think different. You know, really look at different ways of doing things. In today's environment, it's absolutely critical that you are able to take information, absorb it, and apply it. 
it's, I call it just-in-time learning because there's so much information out there. There's no way you're going to know everything. So when the time comes that you have to get it and go, go after that information, you have to be able to understand how to absorb it and then reapply it. And then the collaboration piece, a very collaborative company. And so you have to communicate. Mm -hmm. All right. We will end it there. The fireworks show, uh, if you come on downtown, starts at 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock, 5.58. Everybody sing the national anthem, no matter where you are. 5.58. <laughs> Tune into your radio stations. <laughs> radio station, but uh, at 10.30. Yeah, 10.30, 10.30. on WGVU-TV, we'll, we will have live coverage of the show. I'd like to thank Carol Valle, Grand Rapids Business Journal. Ed Kettle, 4th of July Fireworks Committee. And Kevin Douglas with Amway Thank Recruitment. Thank you so much for joining Pleasure us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Happy 4th Appreciate of July. It. Happy 4th. And a happy 4th to you. We'll see you next week on West Michigan Week.